beautiful day today. It's raining, but we need the rain. Um, happy to say that uh, our beloved brother, Pastor Meyer, is uh, he's at home right now, right? Yeah, he's still he's at home today, resting, he's able to sleep in his own bed out of the hospital and all the prayers there. So praise God, he's still in much, in need of much prayer with uh, the things he's still overcoming, though. But like um, Brother Lance preached Wednesday evening through the trials and tribulations the Lord brings us. And after we seek him out, he brings us through those showers of blessings come. And I feel, it feels like rain today. The showers and blessings are coming. Praise God for that. Um, for those of you who might not know me, whether I'm here or online, my name is Stephen Moore. I've uh, been here for a year and a half or so and listening to Pastor Meyer and all the wonderful spiritual nourishment he's been feeding me. And I'm thankful to be able to serve in this manner and be up here. And I just give it to the Lord and uh, I pray that he's with me and give me the words to speak and what I'd like to share today. Uh, the title of the message today is uh, Repentance and Retaining Revival. And I, I hope the Lord gives, gives me all the strength to do this and he makes me bold to do this all. So with that, let's pray and give it to the Lord. Oh dear Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we trust and rely upon you, dear Lord, in all things, dear Lord. Oh, dear Lord, I know that I cannot come up here, dear Lord, unless you are here with me, dear Lord, that you're giving me the words to speak, dear Lord. Oh, dear Lord, I just ask for the anointing of the Holy Ghost, dear Lord, for myself and each and every one in here, dear Lord, as we seek to worship you, dear Lord, as we seek to glorify you, dear Lord. Oh, dear Lord, we just look to you for guidance in our lives, dear Lord. We just want to bind and rebuke the devil, dear Lord, and all his minions, dear Lord, that his kingdom have no power, dear Lord, by the power of the blood and the name of Jesus Christ. Let him have no hacks, vexes, or curses come against us, dear Lord. Just protect this body of believers here today as we come together to worship you, dear Lord. I thank you for the privilege and honor it is to do such a thing, dear Lord, that we may still do so in this country, dear Lord. I thank you, dear Lord, for guiding each and every one here, dear Lord, and everyone in on the internet, dear Lord, that their ears and eyes might be open and ready to receive that of which you are willing to give them, dear Lord, that their hearts may be convicted, dear Lord, of what they need in their life to bring them closer unto you, dear Lord. I just pray, dear Lord, that each of us can come to know true repentance, dear Lord, that we can come to know true salvation by the power of the blood we wash every day, dear Lord, and walking in your spirit being clothed in your righteousness, dear Lord. Oh, dear Lord, we just give it all unto you, dear Lord. Everything, each and every day, dear Lord, we just pray humbly in the thy name, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise God. What's that? I didn't know they were recording. Excuse me. Put the other mic on. Be sure your mic is on too. It says it's on. Is it red or green? Green. Just a moment here. Homosexuals and 
flying the flag in there, the country that supports killing babies and, and all sorts of built in wrongness and sin against God. So, I mean, it says in the United States that 43% of our population attends church weekly. That seems like a pretty, pretty not a big number, but when you look to the churches and what's being taught there, basically they seem like entertainment centers for the most part. And you have to look and wonder if these people can really be saved. I don't see how they can according to scripture. Um, you know, with 43%, that's a huge population. I really believe that if these people truly were saved, this would be an entirely different country. Um, the only other country, interestingly enough, that comes close is South Korea. They have upwards of 29 to 35% of their population are Christians, and it's growing. And that's because there's been a lot of revivals there. And it's really been working on their people, and it's overcoming all the other religions there because they're becoming a Christian nation. And there are other countries around the world where Christians are being persecuted unto death and torture and horrible things. And in China, being one of them, each day in China, 37, 37 to 40,000 people are turning to Christ a day. That's amazing. Um, I know uh, a couple weeks ago, a couple of brothers, uh, Brian and uh, Tim and I went to a conference uh, where there was some testimony given from different uh, Christians around the world. And just hearing their testimonies and the things they've been through just to serve Christ, just to worship Him, just to own a Bible, just to read a Bible, just to find scripture, you know, where you can be killed just for owning a Bible. You know, I mean, what do we face in this country? <laughs> Nothing compared to that. Granted, it might come to that, but praise God that this has been the land of the free. You know, and it has been the land of the free because of our Constitution. It's been the land of the free because this has been a land of revivals. And if we look back in history, we would find since uh, 17. 1740s, 200 years ago, revivals started in this country. Revivals have happened in this country every 50 years since then. And that is what has made this land of the free. Because with every generation, there's been a renewing of the spirit, a renewing of the blessings of God upon this land. And, you know, with the last two major revivals, the Pentecostal revival in the uh, early 1900s, um, that was a wildfire with Azusa Street and all that. And it was the Pentecostal revival that changed the world, that went across the world. And we had the, the Great Healing Revival in the 1950s. So I mean, it's been every 50 years. And we are overdue. <laughs> And I mean, even if we look back to the 1950s and that revival, there were good things that came out of it, but also it was a bit messy as there were things like the Seeds of Faith Doctrine and which where a lot of the, the prosperity doctrine and stuff came out of that was corrupted in the churches. So even the last revival didn't last very long. And if you look to scripture, you'll find that that lines up with biblical scripture in that in uh, Leviticus 25, I can just read it for you, 25.10, says, And ye shall hallow the 50th year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land, unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. Every 50 years there was a renewing in the land, where men were freed from bondage and slavery and returned unto their families. Land was returned to its original owners. You know, in the 50th year, the trumpet of the Jubilee was sounded, and this is what happened. There's, liberty was proclaimed throughout the land. And in this land, it's been a spiritual liberty that's been proclaimed through the revivals. And that is what has made this land free. And so, in looking upon that, we have to uh, wonder what's wrong now.